In order to cultivate your witness, you need to learn to observe your reactions in order to go beyond them. It is the going beyond that is the crux of the sacred quest. There are many ways that you can use the observation process. Here are a couple of them that are very important. The first is observing your body. This is one of the areas of being the witness that most of us have practiced somewhat. In general, we allow our body to function without interference. We are aware that there is the body and that there is a ghost in the machine, if you will. For as long as you can remember, you have been observing this phenomenon of a body. It is also true that you know that the entity that is doing the observing is removed in some dramatic way from that which it is witnessing. As you are listening to these words, you are allowing your body to act out its destiny without your meddling. You are not busy beating your heart or filling your lungs or oxygenating your blood supply or circulating your vital fluids. You allow your body to operate itself, and you allow another part of you to know the way of being the divine, quiet, non-interfering observer. This way has served you well. By just observing your body and detaching yourself from its functioning, it works as perfectly as it was ordained to. If you were constantly monitoring and attempting to control your bodily functions, you would be unduly attached to its outcome, and you would inhibit its natural functions. The times in your life when you worry or interfere with the natural functions of your body are the times when you find it breaking down. Feed your body the wrong foods and it will respond with lethargy and disease. Fail to exercise it and it will become overweight and groggy. Ignore its needs for fresh air and healthy environment and it will fall into disrepair. Feed it narcotic substances or artificial drugs and it will react with violent symptoms. When your body is in any state of disrepair from being overweight to having back pains or nervousness or influenza or cancer or anything that is not the way of perfect health that your body knows at the cellular and genetic levels, then you are being called back to the position of loving witness. The second way of observing is called observing your mind. Your mind is filled with thousands of thoughts every day. They come and they go like trains in a terminal. One enters, another takes its place, one exits and along comes another. First you want to watch your thoughts, then you want to watch yourself watching your thoughts. Here is the door to the inner space where, free from all thoughts, you experience the bliss and the freedom that transport you directly to your higher self. The simple exercise of watching your mind manufacturing its thoughts will eventually cause unwanted, unnecessary, erroneous thoughts to dissolve. In the process of cultivating the witness, you learn to quiet your mind, to take inventory, and dispose of or reassign thoughts that generate self-defeating or ego-centered responses. In this simple process, you also come to know your spiritual self. Ego-generated thoughts play a huge role in creating the world that the ego wishes to create. Each of my thoughts seem to demand it be considered the most important. Troubles begin with a thought that you put into your mind and allow to fester to the point of anxiety. The anxiety begins to manifest in your life in physically destructive ways, which we call things like arthritis, high blood pressure, and career cardiacs. The loving, non-judgmental energy received from the observer or the witness will allow these thoughts to flow in and out as naturally as the ocean tides. Tides in, tides out. Thoughts in, thoughts out. You will learn to be a witness to your thoughts in the same way that you observe the tide. And the process will cleanse and redistribute and remove thoughts in much the same way as the driftwood on the beach. What remains is generally quite pleasing. Witnessing your thoughts will take some practice. With proficiency comes wonder and delight. Trauma is dissolved in the thinking stage and prevented from manifesting into your everyday world. Begin to notice the noticer. As you take note of your worlds, both inner and outer, begin to familiarize yourself with the noticer who is behind that which is being noticed. If you do this several times each day, you will begin to see that you are much more than just a body and mind going through the program motions of your life. Your realization of your true self as the witness behind that which is being witnessed will bring you a new dimension of creativity and bliss. Try on this exercise. Think of something that has been bothering you for a long period of time. Now go to a quiet place and close your eyes. Just see the problem surfacing on the blank screen in your consciousness. Notice all aspects of the problem, what it looks like, when it shows up, what you feel when it is on your mind, the pain and the fear that you have when it is present, how you have dealt with it unsuccessfully in the past. Think of everything that you can which is related to the problem. Then, detach yourself in your mind from the problem. 
Just allow it to sit there on the screen of your mind. Look at it from the viewpoint of the compassionate witness who just non-judgmentally notices the screen. Watch it like a movie, allowing it to change in whatever way it does. Just observe it with loving permission for it to do whatever it wants to do. You will see it change and fade in and out of awareness. With each change or movement on the screen, remain in the caring witness mode of knowing the energy will do what it will and will also be accompanied by the loving energy from the witness. Often, just this act of observation will result in a feeling of the problem having dissipated. If that happens, observe that also from the position of caring observer. I once practiced this act of observation when I was injured and unable to play tennis. I reacted at first to the pain in my foot with statements like, this injury is keeping me from doing what I want to do and I'm really upset about it. I found that no matter what I tried, the pain persisted and I was unable to pivot and consequently had to discontinue an activity that I loved. I then took the witness stance. I no longer saw myself as having an injury. I attributed the pain only to my body and not to me. I witnessed the entire thing and merely watched it. I lovingly witnessed the pain, the way it showed up, my feelings of frustration about it, the color of the swelling, everything. But I refused to think of it as mine. It was only my body's problem. The very same day that I did this, the entire discomfort disappeared. I mean, it was gone from my body. I had put my attention on what was occurring and detached myself from it. And in what seemed like a few hours, I no longer had the pain and I was playing tennis as if I had never experienced any injury at all. In order to know the benefit of witnessing, you will have to banish the doubt about this as something that will work for you. Remember, you have been conditioned to believe that your body is the essence of your humanity. You've been taught to tackle problems with your physical and intellectual apparatus, not your higher self. Practice new self-talk sentences to replace your old identification with your physical body. I am that which owns this body. I am not the body itself. I can't be reached if you come to me with hatred or anger. I cannot worry when I refuse to be the worrier and simply observe that worrier and the worries. Self-talk sentences will keep you centered on your spiritual domain. You will find that many things that you worried about or experienced in a negative fashion are slowly beginning to diminish from your life.